When I looked down into the street, I actually saw automobiles. What are you doing? Making a long distance phone call. Beijing Hotel. Your naive idiocy makes me very angry! Computer. End program. Augmented reality and virtual reality. These are these immersive computer generated environments that we can actually be a part of. And they're about to make the jump from the world of science fiction, from movies like Tron and Matrix and Lawnmower Man and my favorite, Star Trek and the Holodeck, to our next reality. There's no better place to look than the world of science fiction to see what's next. And whether it's uh, just pure imagination and creativity, or whether it's the fact that they're not bound by the biases or boundaries of business, science fiction writers have been incredibly prolific at predicting the future. Do a couple fun examples. So in 1865, Jules Verne predicts that we'll send men to the moon, 1865, and he does it within about 10 years of it actually happening. In 1945, Arthur C. Clarke predicts that we'll have satellites orbiting the Earth, 1945, and serve as a communication system. In 1953, Ray Bradbury predicts that we'll have flat panel TVs and the thing we have in our ear all the time, the earbuds. But perhaps the most prolific predictor of them all, H.G. Wells, in 1899, think about that a second, 1899 predicts that we'll have iPad-like devices as well as cell phones. But my favorite prediction of them all comes in 1898 from Mark Twain who says, once we're all connected by wires, we'll waste all of our time simply watching what each other are doing. <laughs> Prophetic. But is it time for the holodeck? So the holodeck is this creation from Gene Roddenberry, who's the creator of Star Trek. And it's this, this idea that you can have this room that you can walk into and you can go any place any time, and be anybody. And it first aired in 1987 on an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation, and as it would be, it inspired an entire generation of scientists and businessmen and science fiction fans. And I think it's next. The holodeck. So, trying to predict the future of business is a lot of fun. But in business, when is just important as what? So question, what's the difference between being early and wrong? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> so I had my first experience being early and wrong in a company uh, that we started that focused on trying to make promotions more efficient, that they would be delivered digitally and based on your actual consumer behavior. Uh, why we were ultimately right, it took two to three years to really get that business going and get adoption. Now, two to three years in science fiction is spot on, but two to three years being early in business can kill you. So what we learned from that experience is that while we had the, the product focus and we had the competition focus, we hadn't really thought about our broader ecosystem. And that is the issue of being early and wrong. You need to focus on your ecosystem. So for that business, it was things like, remember 1999, internet connectivity to stores, managing large customer databases, analytics programs, and then some really simple stuff like, where well, you're going to need to train employees and get merchandisers on board. And we've seen the same thing happen in the augmented reality and virtual reality space. So in that space, you know, Three or four years ago, there were no developer communities if you wanted to build th these virtual worlds. The, the tools available, the hardware and software, were very uh, early and immature, and it was very difficult to find people that had these skill sets. 
So it's really exciting and it's a function of a lot of R&D from a lot of different companies, but that has changed in the, next, in the last 18 months to a year. Many, many advancements have been made. So today, you have uh, cameras, so you know you take a, a picture with your, your uh, camera phone, but did you know that your camera phone could actually read the environment? It could read images and it can read text. But beyond that, your camera phone can now actually see objects. I can say, geez, I can see that chair and recognize it as a chair. And even further than that, your camera phone is going to be able to map an entire room or map an entire environment. Imagine that. And now you have, in millions of phones now, you have hardware chips and you have processors that can do really high quality 3D imaging and really high quality animation. And they're in millions of phones now. And then this one's really cool. Imagine being able to take an object from physical space and upload it into virtual space. So there's these technologies where you can take lasers and scan them over that same chair and then you can take high resolution photography and layer it over that object to get color and texture and then like a file just upload it right into virtual space. And what's really exciting about that is some of that work's being done right here at Wright State University, which is very cool. So is it time for the holodeck? So in a really cool, strange quirk of fate, one of the very first applications of the holodeck is from a company called AZEC, which is here in Wilmington, Ohio, another innovation. And they happen to be a decking company, make decking and railing for homes. So the first application of the holodeck after all these years of anticipation is decking. <laughs> Let's take a look at what they've innovated. It doesn't take much imagination from there to see where this can go. Being able to hold up an iPad or a device or, or wear a headset on your face and be actual to project content, digital content in the physical space. Think of the applications from education to manufacturing uh, to entertainment. Uh, the opportunities are endless. So it's not quite the holodeck, but it's a big step in the right direction. We're getting closer and closer. So, in the spirit of the science fiction sages, I'm going to take a shot at what the next six years of virtual and augmented reality are going to look like. We'll do it together here. All right. So, in 2015, we're going to see five million headsets ship. These are headsets that you wear on your face to go into this virtual experience like Oculus Rift. So, we'll go from zero to five million. You'll see AR and VR games start to take off. Instead of having individual devices, you'll actually have this technology on your smartphone. You'll be able to take your smartphone and clip it into a device right on your face. E-commerce shopping. So today, you go to the use Target's iPad app and you look at pictures and you look at videos of products. Next year, you'll be able to tap on the product, see it in 3D in virtual space, and then you'll be able to tap a button, actually pop it on your nightstand and look at the lamp on your nightstand. You'll be shopping in 3D. And then you also have technologies like 3D printing previews. 3D printing is a big technology using this kind of technology to preview your products. So in 2016, we'll be up to 10 million headsets, at least. We'll have AR apps for the blind to see. Now that these technologies can actually see their environment, you'll be able to help describe to blind people where they are and what they're seeing. You'll have AR VR app stores, you'll have hollow rooms, and you'll have these AR displays that are actually in your car. So heads up displays. We're seeing some of those already. 2017 AR VR accessories. We'll see this virtual reality exoskeleton. So you have this device on your face, but you'll be able to step into an exoskeleton and actually move around and see your own body in virtual space and, and get the response from what's happening in that environment. You'll see 10 million virtual vacations, right? People won't leave their couch. You'll see architecture and design firms that specialize in this technology. And you'll see AR integrated into your mobile camera. 
So you go to a movie, you hold up your mobile camera, you look at a movie poster and you get a review. You'll just expect to be able to interact with physical environment. We'll see 50 million headsets shipped in 2018. We'll see AR assisted classrooms. We'll see our first full VR movie, probably directed by James Cameron, <laughs> right? And we'll have what we're calling pay-per-view point of view in sports arenas. You'll be able to put on these headsets and feel like you're on the 50-yard line. And you'll pay by the minute, probably. <laughs> in 2019, we'll see Hollow Room conferencing. I called it Match.com VR. I'll let your imagination run wild with what that's going to be. <laughs> we'll see retail data glasses. So imagine you're a store manager at a local Kroger and you're trying to figure out what to place where on the shelf. What's our, my best sellers? Instead of looking through spreadsheets and looking at data, you'll put on these glasses and all of a sudden the products will start to change colors and shapes and you'll see data pop up so you can optimize the store. You'll see the first full VR theme park. Go online and type in Oculus Rift and Roller Coaster and you'll know exactly what I mean. Full theme parks, they're all virtual. And we'll probably see our first VR related death. Go back and look up Oculus and roller coaster and you know what I mean. <laughs> so in 2020, we'll have a, a hundred million headsets out. Somebody will coin, I'm coining it today, reality distortion syndrome. We'll have shopping centers. We'll have AR in all cars. And we'll have our first property, digital, pro fully digital virtual property that will sell for $10 million. <laughs> Augmented reality and virtual reality will be our next reality. Thank you. <laughs>